Hello, this is William from Visual Components. In this video, I'm going to show you how to teach a robot a defined tool statement. A defined tool statement allows you to edit a tool frame of a robot during a simulation. So when you reset the simulation, the changes you made to that tool frame are undone. And this can be very helpful if you need to edit the center of gravity of the tool frame, or when you're performing some type of operation with a robot, for example, welding, machine tending, or painting. To learn more about this statement, I'll go to the Help tab here, click the Help button, and this opens the Help file. I'll now expand the Reference Guide, expand Robot Statements, and select this topic here called Define Tool. So you can read this topic to learn more about the statement and its properties. Now these properties are pretty much identical to the properties of a defined base statement, and you can follow the link in the video to learn more about these. So I won't go into too much detail about these properties in this video. Let's go ahead and exit out of the help file, and I'll now give you an example. So add any robot you want to the 3D world. I'll now go to the program tab, and I'll use the jaw command to select the robot. And if you cannot see the tool frames in the robot, go to the 3D world toolbar, click the frame types arrow, and select this checkbox here called robot tools. So this turns on the global visibility of tool frames, and if the labels of your tool frames are too small to see, you can click the File tab to go backstage, click Options, click Display, and then use this option here called Frame Label Size. So by default it should be 10, I'll set mine to be 30, then click OK to save the change, and notice that I can now see those tool frames better. There we go. So by default on most robots the tool frames are in the mount plate, which is located right here, and if we look at the handles of the Jog tool, we can see that this is using the current coordinate system that's defined here in our jog panel, so right now it's showing the world coordinate system, but the tool frame also indicates its own object coordinate system, so notice the tool frame at z-axis is pointing outward in that direction. And you can verify this by going to the jog panel and selecting the object here, so now it's showing the object coordinate system of the selected tool in the robot, which right now is none. So if I go to the jog panel and select tool frame 1, there we go. Now if you want to edit tool frame directly, you can go to the jog panel, use the tool property here to select it, then click the gear icon. So now I'm not jogging the robot, I'm moving and editing the tool frame I have selected, which is tool frame 1 right now. So notice you can transform it, you can assign it to a different node, but right now the tool frame is attached to the mount plate node of the robot, and you can also change its interpolation mode. Let's now use a defined tool statement and move tool frame 1 along its z-axis. So I'll go to the Program Editor panel, I'm working with the main routine. I'll now click this button to add a defined tool statement. I'll then go to the Statement Properties panel, and we first want to select what tool frame we want to change. So it's going to be Tool Frame 1. We can move it relative to its own coordinate system, or its parent coordinate system, which right now is the mount plate node of the robot. Let's move it relative to its own coordinate system, along that z-axis, and let's use 300. So when I run the simulation, you can see that now tool frame 1 is all the way over here. And if I reset the simulation, notice it goes back to its initial position, which is right here. Let's see what happens when you want to change the node of a tool frame. So I'll go to the Home tab, and I'm going to mount a tool, or sorry, an end of arm tool to the robot. So in the eCatalog panel, I'll expand Models by Type, and let's go to Tools. So expand that, then click Visual Components. And let's use a weld torch, so I'll scroll down, I'll double click this item here, and since I had the robot selected, it automatically connected the tool to the robot. And it seems that the tool is a bit too big for the robot. <laughs> that looks funny, doesn't it? But we're just using this as an example. Let's go back to our program tab, and when we move tool frame 1, let's actually not offset its z-axis, let's just assign it to a different node. So for in our statement properties panel, we're still editing tool frame 1 for this statement. Let's reset the z value back to 0. And then for the node, let's use this drop down menu to select the tip node of our weld torch. So I'll select it right there. You could also use this pick property command here to directly select it in the 3D world, but it might be kind of difficult if you're using a weld torch and you want to select a tip here. So what we expect to happen is during the simulation, tool frame 1 should snap to this area right here where this imported tool frame is called weld tip. If we run the simulation, 
Let's actually stop it right here and see what happens. So if I go to the Jog panel, still have Tool Frame 1 selected. It seems it didn't snap it there, so let's reset. Select the statement, and notice here I left the is relative checkbox selected, so let's clear that out, and now we should see the tool frame snap here. So if I run the simulation, yep, tool frame one is now here. So let me pause the simulation. You can see that's where tool frame one is. So if I go to the jog panel, you can see that tool frame one is the active tool or tool center point in the robot, and that's why the jog handles are right here. But if I reset, you can see tool frame one goes back to its initial location here and its default node, which is the mount plate. Let's now see how this works when you have a part that's picked up by the robot. So it goes to the Home tab. And let's actually delete this weld torch. I'll then go back to my eCatalog panel. And under Models by Type, I'll click Products and Containers. And let's actually expand this and select Visual Components. And let's get one of my favorite parts in the 3D world. The cube, yes! Let's drag that in. And let's make it a bit smaller. So I'll just edit its properties really quick. So I'll set its cube length to be 100, its width to be 100, and its height to be 100. And I think the robot should be able to reach that. So now let's just quickly teach the robot to pick up this cube. So I'll go back to the Program tab. And then I'm still using Tool Frame 1. And let's go ahead and use the Snap command here in the Tools group. And since I'm jogging the robot, I'm going to snap the robot to a location. And you can see the preview here. Snap it right there. Good. Let's now make that our pick position. So I'll add a linear motion statement. Then add a set binary output statement to signal a grasp action. So I'll use output port of 1 and set the output value to be true. Let's then lift up along the z-axis and make that our retract position, which is a linear motion and our approach position, which will be a point-to-point -point motion. And let's make our approach to be the first statement. There we go. And then let's reset and see what happens. All right, the cube did pick up. I'm sorry, the robot did pick up the cube. And for our defined tool statement, it kind of acted funny. So if we select it here in the program editor panel, we can see that before we were trying to attach it to a node that no longer exists in the 3D world. So right now its node is null. And essentially, the tool frame is attached to the 3D world, so we don't want that. Let's edit the statement properties. So let's first reset the simulation. And in the statement properties panel, let's actually move the tool frame in its parent cord system. So if I set the tool property to null and then reselect tool frame one, you can see I get its current values right now in the 3D world. So it's attached to the mount plate. And I know that the dimensions of the cube is 100 by 100 by 100, so let's move it in the z-axis of 100. So if I run the simulation, yep, there we go. We can see that tool frame 1 moved down here. So now if I was to teach a position for placing this cube, you know, it might be a bit easier for you, especially if you need to post-process this robot program. Now before I end the video, I want to show you one last thing where we're tracing the motion of the robot. So go ahead and delete the cube from the 3D world. And the program editor panel, you can see that I deleted all the statements in the main routine. Let's now go to our jog panel. And we're still using tool frame one. And let's actually move the robot down towards the floor. Make that a point to point motion statement. And then using the jog handle here, the green arrow for the Y axis, let's move it in this direction here. And make that a linear motion statement. But before the robot goes from P1 to P2, let's add a set binary output statement. Set the output port to 17, so this will signal a tracing action, as long as the output value is true. And if I reset and run the simulation, you can see the robot traced a line from P1 to P2. Now, these positions are using tool frame 1, so let's see what happens when we change the location of tool frame 1 before we go to P1. So let's reset, and then let's select our main routine, and then add a define tool statement. So it inserts it to be the first statement in the routine. I'll then go to my statement properties panel, select tool frame one, and we can move it relative to its own coordinate system. And this time let's move it, let's say 100. So I have a 100 millimeter offset here, 
along the z-axis. And if I run the simulation, but before I do that, I'll ask you a question. Do you think the line that was traced from P1 to P2 will still be in the same location since we're changing or offsetting tool frame 1? Think about it. Run the simulation, and you can see the line is still at the exact same place, but the distance of the robot from those positions is different because tool frame 1 is offset from those positions. So the robot will move to position 1 based on the location of tool frame 1, and then move to position 2 using tool frame 1 as well. So that's why there's this distance here. So if we were to reset, go back to our statement properties panel and reset the Z coordinate here for tool frame 1 in our statement, run the simulation again, you see the line is still at the same place, but now the robot is a bit closer to the robot positions. It's actually directly on them. So if we reset and do what we did before using a 100 millimeter offset, the robot will move to position 1 and position 2, but it will be at a different distance. So it'll be about 100 millimeters away from position 1 and position 2. Run the simulation, and there you go. Now, whenever you are using a defined tool statement, be very aware of when you're calling that statement in your program. For example, if we go back to the program enter panel, we can see that we're changing the location of tool frame 1 before the robot goes to position 1 and position 2. So if I run the simulation, you can see the robot goes to P1 with that offset and then to P2 with that same offset and we have a nice straight line here. But if I was to reset the simulation, move the defined tool statement after the robot reaches P1, you can see the robot knows to go to P1 using that tool frame and this is where it will go. But then we're changing the location of tool frame 1 to have some offset along the z-axis. So now the robot will think, okay, well, now the position's over here. So when it goes to position 2, we should see some type of straight line from over here to there. Let's reset, run the simulation, and there you go. So after the robot reached position 1, we changed the tool frame that was used to reach the position, and that's why we have this different line here. All right, this concludes the video. If you have any more questions, please feel free to visit our forum at forum.visualcomponents.com. And as always, have a wonderful day.